Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to recover data from a RAID system based on a D-Link NAS device model DNS343, how to create a RAID, how to configure a network connection, and how to add a new shared folder. These days, D-Link routers and modems are well known all over the world, but this company also produces home and office storage systems such as Network Attached Storage, or NAS for short. Most of the time, these devices are fully compliant with industry standards and do not differ much from similar products by other manufacturers. And to the same extent, they are also affected by risks of data loss due to hardware failures or errors. Regardless of the actual manufacturer name, all NAS devices are vulnerable to damage or failure, just as ordinary hard disks used in desktop computers and laptops. Unfortunately, this is what happens sooner or later to any hard disk actively used on a daily basis. Just like any other NAS, dealing devices let you use a number of volumes, unite several disks into one, and manage network access to the storage while providing sufficient reliability and security for your data. Although a network attached storage unites individual hard disks into RAID arrays, which are more reliable in terms of keeping your data for a long time, it doesn't completely exclude the risk of data loss. Attempts to restore data from NAS devices with the help of various data recovery tools are not always successful. Some tools can only recover a part of the data, while others may even damage the information still remaining on the hard disk. To avoid this misfortune, you should be very careful in selecting the proper software for the job. In today's video, I'll show you how to choose a good data recovery utility to use with NAS device, and how to recover the lost information. Hello, friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. For starters, let's see how you can build a RAID system on a D-Link NAS device. When the device is started for the first time, you'll be suggested to configure it. One of the stages involves building an array with the connected hard disks. To create a RAID system, select the RAID type. In my case, this is RAID 5 made up of three disks. And click Next. In the next window, you are suggested to enable Auto Rebuild. Click Next to continue. Now it's time to choose a file system. You can only choose between ext2 and ext3. Go for the most stable option, ext3, and click Next again. After that, the process of disk initialization and formatting begins. If there is any important information on those disks, don't forget to back it up, as it will be very difficult to recover it after formatting. When the volume is formatted, you'll be suggested to restart the device. The disk array is ready. To change the RAID level, set a different volume or modify it in any other way, click on the Reconfiguration button. To change the RAID level, select it from this list and change the settings just as you did before. If you want to change its volume, go for Custom Configuration. Choose a RAID type. Enable or disable Auto Rebuild. Select a file system. And set the array capacity. Then click Next. Wait until initialization is complete. When this process is over, the device will be ready to use. Now you can add a new shared folder and configure network access. To create a shared resource, open the tab Advanced Network Access. Select Network Access Type SMMB or NFS and choose Users for this directory. You can even choose all accounts. Then click Browse. Go to the directory where you want to create a new folder. Click on this icon. Give a name. And click OK. The last step is to add read and write permissions and save the settings to make this folder available on the network. Now connect to it by FTP and write the data you want to store in this folder. There are so many things that may cause loss of data. 
human errors, formatting of writing information, oversheating, power failures, hardware and software errors, mechanical issues, and even if one hard disk fails, it puts extra pressure on the other disks. So, if you overlook to replace a faulty disk in time, it may cause some data to disappear. If you can't access the data stored inside your NAS, you can try and extract the files with the help of specialized data recovery software designed with the disk arrays in mind. Hetman Read Recovery. Most NAS devices format their hard disks for a Linux family file system. So when such disk arrays are connected to a Windows computer directly, you can't read their contents without using third-party software. All proprietary RAID management systems used to, for network-attached storage are based on two Linux RAID technologies – MDADM and LVM. However, Hetman RAID Recovery supports both of them, and in most cases it can rebuild such RAID arrays automatically. This is a comprehensive solution for NAS data recovery to help you restore your files in a number of different scenarios. This program supports most popular file systems and RAID types. Take the disks out of the NAS device and connect them to a Windows computer. When the computer to which you have connected the disks has booted and its operating system asks you to initialize or format them, don't do that because it will make recovery a lot more complicated. Our utility features an advanced mechanism of automatic scanning designed to identify and recover NAS data in various scenarios of data loss. The program will automatically read the necessary information from the disks which used to make up the damaged array and then rebuild it. The RAID will be displayed in the Drive Manager, and its brief information will be shown at the bottom of the window. Check if the program has identified it correctly. To recover files, right-click on the disk array and choose Open. Select the scan type and start it. As you can see, in my case, the program has easily rebuilt the damaged RAID and found all the files it used to store. It displays all the files, even those that have been deleted. They are marked with the red cross. Select all the items you want to recover. Click Recovery, select where you want to save them, and click Recovery again. When the entire process is over, you will find the recovered files in the folder you have chosen. In the case with RAID 5, the array type I'm using for illustration data can be recovered from a failed NAS device even if one disk is missing. Another similar scenario is when the computer where you connect the hard disk for recovery operations doesn't have as many SATA ports or power supply connectors as you need for every disk, so you may connect three disks instead of four. When a disk is damaged or service information is erased, the program may have difficulty in rebuilding the RAID automatically. However, you can do it manually with the RAID constructor if you know the properties of this damaged array. Open the constructor, select Manual mode, and fill in all the information you know about this disk array. The RAID type, block order, and size. Add the disks it used to include. Use the arrows to specify the order and replace the missing disks with empty drives by clicking the plus button. Also, you can specify the offset that helps to locate the beginning of the disk. Sometimes the program may have difficulty in identifying it automatically, so you'll have to enter the offset value manually. Usually, if you give correct properties, the newly built RAID system has at least one partition. Expand it to check for the folders that you need. If the folders you are looking for are displayed, then you have built this RAID properly. When you specify all the properties you know, click Add, and the array will appear in the Drive Manager. To have the array recovered, the last step is to scan it. Find the file you want to restore, select them, 
and recover to the folder you choose. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Push the bell button to receive notifications and never miss new videos. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck.